Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss the integrated audit. What is the integrated audit? It's when the when the auditor audit the financial statement and issue an opinion, which is the traditional audit. Also audit the internal control over financial reporting and also issue an opinion. In this session about the integrated audit, we would look at testing and evaluating the design and operation of the internal control over financial reporting. In the prior session, we looked at what we call the top-down approach. Remember, our objective as auditors in an integrated audit is to issue the opinion about the internal control over financial reporting. What steps do we undertake? We plan the engagement. We use top-down approach, which we already covered. We test and evaluate the design of the internal control over financial reporting. We test and evaluate the operating effectiveness. So we're going to test the design or evaluate the design, test and evaluate the operating effectiveness. So I decided to cover these two steps in this session. Then at the end, we'll, we will form an opinion, which is our end product, which is that's our objective about the effectiveness of internal control. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's start by looking at testing and evaluating the design of internal control. What is the design? What do we mean? What do we mean by the word design? Well, simply put, what does the internal control looks like on a piece of paper? Simply put, you are looking at the map. You are not doing anything. You are not taking the trip. When you look at a map, you're just looking to see where you're going. You're not actually going anywhere. Let's talk about something even simpler. Let's assume you're studying for the CPA exam. So that's your plan. Plan is to study. You will have a design for that plan. And what's the design? The design to read the notes, watch the lectures, solve MCQs, and solve simulations. So that's the design. That's the plan. Now, if you do so, you might pass. But that's how the design but it doesn't mean you are going to do that. The design is just basically what you put down on a piece of paper. Now, why do we need to learn about the design? Because we need to learn about the design or, te or test the design effectiveness. And we assume after we learn about the design, if that design is working properly, it should achieve the company's control objective and effectively prevent and detect errors on fraud that could lead to material misstatement. All what we are doing first is we want to see is the design good? Maybe the design is no good right from the get-go. But then you have, you have a serious issue here. But first, we need to learn about the design. Now, what procedures do you have to undertake to learn about the design? One procedure you can use is called walkthrough. And basically, tracing transactions, starting with a transaction from the origination through the company information system till it appears on the company's financial statement. So taking the taking the statement from A to Z. Now, the auditor can do this themselves or with the help of the internal with the help of the internal auditors. So the external alone, or they can get the help of the internal auditor. During this process, they might conduct inquiries, talk to management, inquiry of personnel, observe operation. Sometimes they let you know they're observing, sometimes they don't, and inspection of documents. And all what they're doing now is learning is learning about the design of the internal control. That's all what they're doing. But that's not good enough. Why? Because you can have a great internal control on a piece of paper, but if it doesn't work properly, it, it's useless. So now what you want to know is, is it operating effectively? So is the internal control over financial reporting actually working as designed? Is it operating effectively? If we go back to your CPA plan, are you going to actually read the notes, watch the lecture, solve the MCQs and the SIMS? That's what you said you, you want to do. That was the design. That was the map. But are you actually doing it? Maybe you're not reading the notes. Maybe you're not watching the lectures. You're just going into the solving MCQs or something like that. So you are not following what you said you will do. But if you do so, 
you should pass or you should learn the material you should be prepared you should it doesn't mean you will pass but you should be prepared you should pass eventually okay so why test the operating effectiveness because okay we learned about it now we need to increase our conviction that the internal control over financial reporting is actually working we know by design it's good if working properly but we need to know whether it's working properly or not when we test the internal control over financial reporting, we need to be familiar with three terms, the nature of the testing, timing of the testing, and extent, which is basically very similar to the testing that we learn about in your audit, uh, regular audit, which is auditing financial statement. The nature is basically the type of test. What type of test can we undertake? Well, we already learned about inquiries, asking questions, observation, inspection, and we do this through in the learning stage we would also do this during the testing stage why not we can do it again in addition we have to do reperformance recalculation of the application of the controls now we have to test it actually go through it and run some numbers and see if it's actually working as expected if they're saying they're doing they're getting the approval for that sales order see if they're getting the approval see if they're properly computing the sales tax see if they're properly computing the sales tax go through it for example, if you want to test completeness for recorded invoices, maybe you could use a general audit software, something like IDEA or Program Excel, to find out if there's any gaps in the shipping documents. Now you're actually testing the control. Well, you looked at their shipping design, everything looks good. They have a good shipping system, but is it actually working? You will test it. Now, bear in mind, you have to know that inquiries alone are, are not sufficient to test the operating effectiveness. Inquiries are good to learn, but not to test. You could use it during testing, but it's by itself is not enough. So that's the nature of the test. Timing. Timing basically answer when are you going to test. Okay. It should be over a period of time. Okay. Now, bear in mind, we have certain routine transactions, transactions that repeatedly occur, and certain transactions or events that are not routine. For routine transactions, we would assume that the control is continuously operated as tested. So, for example, if you have sales transaction through a computer system, you would assume if it's you tested it for a week or a day, and it's a computer system and there's no changes, you would assume it's routine. It should it should it should be it should be functioning properly. You might have non-routine events, for example, preparing monthly or quarterly financial statements. You really cannot test until after they're done to see how well the process went. Now you have to introduce unpredictability during the process. You cannot tell management when are you going to be testing because if you do, well, they might uh, be a little bit more alert and change their method. So that's why when I said about observation. Sometimes when, when you want to conduct observation, don't let them know because when people know they are being observed, they might behave differently. So that's timing. Extent of the test, well, how much are you going to test? Like basically the volume, how much are you going to test? And the answer is to obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence. Why? Because you need to provide a high level of assurance that the internal control related to the assertions are operating effectively. Now, again, we're still talking in general terms, and we're going to keep talking in general terms. But basically, what you have to know is this. If the control is manual, it's not automated, it's going to require more work. Because automated controls, once you know they're working properly, you test them. Once a computer system processes something properly, it's programmed to do it, it's always going to do it. Manual control, people get lazy, get tired, so you have to do a little bit more testing. The more important the control, the more testing it requires. So if, if a control is important, then we should know this because testing internal control is a risk-based risk approach. The more important, the more risky, the more work you would give it. The more frequent the control used, the more the testing as well. Okay. So also the more frequently we use this control because we use it continuously, you want to make sure it's working. It's not a one-time thing. And you cannot accept less than persuasive evidence so the evidence has to be persuasive how well it has to be sufficient and appropriate how to provide high level of assurance how follow these general terms so this it's a judgment at the end of the day now we have to understand because we do test of controls when we audit the financial statements and we do test of controls for integrated audit so we need to understand the differences between the two because you could be asked a question Okay. First, the purpose. The purpose is different. The purpose of audited financial statement is to assess control risk. Why do we need to assess control risk? 
to decide whether we're going to rely on this control or not rely on this control. Remember, we have low control risk. And if there's a low, low control risk, that means we're going to rely. We're going to obtain evidence to see if that control was operating during the period we are auditing. If it's a high control risk, we don't rely. We don't test anything. So that's why that's the purpose of auditing financial statement when you are not issuing a report on the controls over financial reporting. Now, if you are issuing a report about internal control over financial reporting, which is you are conducting an integrated audit, the purpose is different. The purpose is to issue an opinion about the effectiveness of internal control taken as a whole to determine whether it's fairly stated at a point in time. So the, the purpose is different. Because the purpose is different, the scope is different. And the procedures are more extensive. The scope is definitely different. Maybe the procedures could be similar, inquiries, observation, but they're more extensive. So to answer the question, it's different. They're totally different. For purpose, scope, and procedures, we say they're different. Just make sure you know the difference. And hopefully this slide kind of explain the difference between the test of control that you learn about during the regular audit, the audit for financial statement, and the integrated audit is totally different different. Now, we are ready now to form an opinion on the effectiveness of internal control. And this is going to be heavy duty stuff, forming an opinion and issuing actually the report itself. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs. That's going to help you understand this concept better. In this, in this concept, they test you not only there's some me memorization here, but if you understand the purpose, the overall picture, you have to use less memory. But if you have to use your memory 100 percent, you'll be in trouble because you're going to have to learn about this, about non-attestation services, many, many different reports. So that's why understanding is totally the right thing to do for the CPA exam, because think about how many reports you have to deal with reviews compilations, MDNA, SOC report. Should I keep going? So there's a lot of, the point is, there's a lot of reports. Relying on your memory, big mistake. There's agreed upon procedure, prospective information, pro forma financial information. Okay, so bear in mind that memory does not work for the CPA exam. Understanding, appreciating will work much, much better. I'm always here to help you study, good luck, Attack each topic one at a time, understand it, and assume that's the only topic you're studying for. Good luck.